What we want to prove is this is a feasible way of reducing the cooling power required to cool a magnet. I'm in the HTS lab where Tokamak Energy have been developing innovative technologies to address the challenges of commercialising fusion power. As recognition of their contribution to this field, Tokamak Energy has received funding from the UK government as part of the Advanced Modular Reactor Programme. The Advanced Modular Reactor Programme was a 10 million award that we got through the government. The government chose to invest in us as a way to drive fusion technology and innovation. This investment is used at Tokamak Energy to mainly drive our diverter technology and magnets technology. Part of this funding has been used to build a cryogenic power supply to tackle a very specific issue of using high temperature superconducting magnets. So uh, my name is Ivan Kristev and I'm a power electronics engineer in the magnets team. My role involves researching power supply and protection systems for superconducting magnets and this is one example here. So what we're trying to build is a uh, cryogenic power converter. So to get the high magnetic field in the magnet, you need to push a lot of current through it, so uh, thousands of amps. At the same time, the magnet needs to be cryogenically cooled to uh, very low temperatures, as low as 20 Kelvin. So a big challenge is getting that current through the magnet while still keep keeping it cold. What keeps it cold is the cryogenic cooling system and any power basically dissipated inside or close to the magnet needs to be cooled away by this cryogenic system. The normal way you do it is you'd have big conductors going inside the cryostat, but those have a physical limitation as to how much power they dissipate. So if you want to reduce the cooling load even further, you have to be creative, which is why we're building a power electronics converter. The cryogenic system is one of the biggest power consumption loads on a, on a tokamak and it's running constantly because magnets take uh, hours or days to cool down and they need to be kept cool for a very long period. We have the potential to reduce the amount of power consumed to cool the magnets by a large factor. So this is our cryogenic power supply. What we want to demonstrate in this experiment is our magnet running at 1,000 or maybe 2,000 amps. And the, the current that actually goes inside the system at room temperature to be 100 times smaller. So if our magnet is running at 1,000 amps, it would only be drawing uh, 5 or 10 amps from its room temperature connection. To get the current from room temperature to the magnet, you have to go through two cooling stages. So the first cooling stage gets you to a temperature of about 70 Kelvin, at which point you can start using superconductors. So superconductors are important, they have high electrical conductivity, but very low thermal conductivity. So that means from the first stage to the second stage, you can use a superconductor to further reduce the temperature, but not dissipate a lot of power. So most of the challenge is in this first stage where you need to use a regular conductor which is a good thermal and electrical conductor. And what we're trying to do is if we do the power conversion at the 70 Kelvin stage, that means we reduce the current in our regular conductor and we only conduct the high current in our superconductors. The challenge with a superconducting magnet is keeping it cool. They need to be operated close to absolute zero. Even high temperature superconductors are operated at very low temperatures and we'll be using ours at around 20 Kelvin or minus 250 degrees C. At these kind of temperatures, even powering the magnet can be tricky. Current from a room temperature power supply can heat the magnet as it energizes it. Using a cryogenic power supply works better because it doesn't heat up the magnet so much. This will therefore improve the overall efficiency of the system. In a future power plant, this will reduce the cost of supplying energy to the magnet system, therefore making an economic power plant more viable.